This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 224. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. And Jim's not here. Power Bottom is gone this week. But we're all here. And there might be a uh, surprise guest later on. Uh, we'll see if he comes by or not. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I'm at- unprepared. Let me get my outline here. You told me you were ready. I started recording. I know, and I apologize profusely. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Good. Anything exciting with you? Today? Or anything or, in general. Or doing ups, downs? Is that Go what you're going your up. <laughs> I know what your up's going to be. Well, my first up is the Blue Jackets in the playoffs. Who's the Blue Jackets? They're Columbus. Ohio's, oh. Ohio's hockey team. Oh, okay. They're up 2-0. In the, in the series yes. against the uh, Washington Capitals. And everybody should root against the Capitals because they have uh, correct. They have oven chicken. Because they have Russians on their team. Oven chicken. Oh, wait. Well, everybody has Russians, Everybody's on, got their Russians on their team. Oh, but they got that Ovechkin guy. Oven chicken. Oven chicken. He's a piece of shit. What's the score now? Allegedly. 7 game, nothing. Game three's on right now. Uh, I will yeah. get you updates game here. As we on, record. And we're stuck in the Bob Studios with no hockey feeds. Uh, the uh, the green room doesn't even have a TV on. Uh, yes. Uh, there's been a technical difficulties that's going to get fixed. You didn't um, pay your bill? No, that is not it. <laughs> they didn't accept IOUs? Blue Jackets, <laughs> Capitals, uh, zero, 0 in the second period. 17.45 left. Mm. All like right. You guys know. That's what she said. Yes. So, anyways, what's your other up? My other up was uh, my trivia team winning the uh, city finals in our trivia championship. Congratulations. Our fourth time winning the city finals. Do you get a ring? No. They used to give a trophy, but they're retiring the trophy. Oh. Who has the other trophies? No, no. They had one trophy that they would, you know. Just get a picture with? You, well, you would get to hold the other trophy and then get your plaque name on it. Oh, you don't get to take it home? It was they recyclable. They don't do it anymore because oh. I suppose they ran out of places. It's all filled up with plaques now. They give you a trophy and they say, you get your picture and they say, okay, can you give that back? <laughs> yeah, it's like a much. Stanley Cup. <laughs> I need that back. Yeah. I'm going to need it back. Could you drink champagne out of that trophy? Did not drink champagne out of Did the trophy. Did you drink Yeggies out of that? I drank nothing out of it. I would never drink anything out of the Stanley Cup. That does not sound healthy. You're, you're allowed to sanitize it before you drink something I, out I of it. I would be bleaching it, and then I would eat, drink it, and then I would die. So that's why. That's because you would drink bleach. Yeah, that tends to happen. It correct? does happen sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Not always. Uh, we do not condone drinking bleach. Uh, we are a history yeah, podcast. You really don't want to drink with that Stanley Cups, Ben. No, 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 no. Uh, Especially Melissa... with mullet-haired hockey players. Well, Melissa McCarthy shit in it, too, so that's yeah. another bad Ooh, thing. yeah. <sighs> so, uh, did you win by a lot, a little, in trivia? Uh, we won by five. 
Okay. Which, five correct answers? No, five points. Oh, okay. You, you could sign points to your to oh. your answers or whatnot, so it was probably the difference of one per, one correctly answered question. So when we go to the expo, you are going to be the trivia guy that everybody's going to be fighting against. Okay. Challenging. So be ready. As long as it's not wrestling trivia. Um, that, I'll, I'll step in for that. How about Disney I saw trivia? You, no, that's, yeah. what you, that's what number one fan is for. Yeah. yeah. I saw you guys holding up a big cardboard check. Now, was the deposit slip just as big? No, they don't actually let you keep the actual check. What? That's just for what? the picture. But the good news is they gave you the equivalent in cash. Mm. So we got cash right away. So that's Not better good. than a check. Were these trivia IRUs or was this real money? Real money. Is it tire money? It's not tire money. Okay. It is U.S. currency. That's because you were playing trivia in Ohio and not in Canada. Yes. Good if call. it was Canada, it would be tire mm. money. Did you ask if you could do, convert it to pounds? I did not ask. Okay. Bitcoin? I demand to be paid in Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. I did want you see Bitcoin. Pornhub is taking Bitcoin now? And oh, I, so Bitcoin is going to skyrocket. Go buy Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin now. Porn is on the cusp of uh, everything, that every new technology. Uh, they decided the VHS beta wars. Yep. Uh, they dev- decided uh, Blu-ray and what was the other one? Uh, HD DVD. There you go. They decided that. Uh, so they do. And, they, and internet streaming. And internet streaming. And DVD above Laserdisc. And that's probably why Hobie IOUs never took off, because I asked if they accepted them. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Remy LaCroix fan site told me no. The Remy LaCroix um, gel mm-hmm. does take it, though. Mm. The site that does sells her gel. So mm. just to let you know. <laughs> that, <laughs> is that gel or gel-shaped body parts? That's probably a better one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I got it from Collider. Uh <laughs> But yes, so just to let you know, that's big news. Pornhub now takes Bitcoin. So get excited. Woo-hoo! Not that type of excited, but, you know, another version. Mm-hmm. So congratulations, Jeff. Thank I saw you. the pictures. Very happy for Yay. you. Yeah, so Did you guys get inebriated that night? Not too bad. We no, went okay. out afterwards and... Celebrated. Yeah, to one of our local uh, brew pubs mm-hmm. and had a couple of rounds of celebratory beers. And then you spent that big check. Unfortunately, they went to pay for the night at the brewery, I and they just, said, here, take a big check. Just told you the big check. <laughs> Actually, when they gave them the prize money, they said, well, in reality, we calculated you owe us $300. <laughs> <laughs> We're not the Blues Brothers. No. <laughs> that big check cost a lot of money. <laughs> well, I have to say, Jim uh, Powerbottom, who is not here tonight, is also on the team. Mm-hmm. 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 So Now, I, I have a question. With the consumption of alcohol... Did your uh, trivia success and useless knowledge increase or de- decrease? Usually increases. Usually increases. Yes. You okay. have to have a couple of beers to get it, the knowledge flowing. I agree. Yes. I agree. That's true. It, it kind of reminds me of that Seinfeld episode. Now, did you, uh, as you abstain from sex, did your trivia knowledge go down and the women's go up? Or was it the opposite? Um, wow. My abstention from sex really is Oh, not that explains why you knew all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, really, really not necessarily my <laughs> personal preference. Scary part is that his, his father didn't know any of the answers. <laughs> I was, I'm joking about that Seinfeld episode. When George became smarter because George he didn't have George smarter because have any. Elaine got dumber because got she plus. didn't have any. Because she didn't have any. Yes. <laughs> That's how they control us. Uh, J- Blake, what's your up? Uh, still enjoying Legion. Okay. Although it's episode two. I've not the seen season. them. They're on my DVR. They will be. I will be caught up this week. You shall consume them. Well, I, I would will. say ditto, but I can't even guarantee I'll be caught up this week. I will mm-hmm. be caught up this week. That's my goal. Mm-hmm. So, are you still enjoying it, though? Mm-hmm. Is it just as good as last season? It's just as effed up as it was last season. Do you know anything it's going on? It's a great on? mind fuck. I mean, it's a great, uh, yes. Do you know anything going on? Yes. Okay, so that's better. Is it yes. less confusing lo- than last year? Yes. Okay. But they take it to a new aspect, and I, I think it's really kind of cool. Okay. Uh, I am up on, for the first time in probably a year, The mm-hmm. Walking Dead. You know, 
Uh, Jeff, are we, are how we far com- behind are you? Are we? Uh, I'm one episode into the series. The season, season one. The series. Season. Season one. Season one. Episode okay. one. Still. I don't want to spoil anything, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> The, um, there so, is so you guys are all caught up? Yes. Because uh, mm-hmm. uh, season finale was this past yeah, week. Yeah, I was uh, discussing it with well, uh, except for some the Fear of the Walking Dead. I didn't see the follow on Fear get to of the Walking Dead because okay. I really didn't want to watch any more Morgan. Yeah. Talk, I'll get to that. I was talking with coworkers and they wanted to hear your guys' take mm, on Walking Dead? On the, the season finale of The okay. Walking Dead. So, spoilers for the next five minutes, okay, Michael? Leal, so you don't bitch at us. Miguel and Michelle Leal. I love you, Michael. Uh, no, so. In one sentence. In one sentence. It, the series could end on that episode. That was my comment. What? That was my thought. Oh, man. Touch. Woo! Uh, yeah, th- that could have been a great series we, finale. We bumped fist for people who couldn't see. Unfortunately, th- Rainy, they actually did. Yes, yes, we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it ended kind of like the season ended kind of like the book did with me. Really, I did not know that because, as many of our listeners know, I did not want to spoil my enjoyment of The Walking Dead on AMC, having read the book. In the book, Negan at the last second goes, he's about ready to kill Rick, and he's like, you know what? There's got to be, there is a better way. You are right. Now, Carl didn't die in the book, but he's like, he starts realizing the gears start to click and he, and he stops for a second. He's like, you know what? That is smart. If we start yeah. working together and then Rick th- slashes his throat. Yeah. In the, the but, books, but they save him too. But it seems so abrupt and like weird. How it turned. You know. I love I Eugene. Disagree. Eugene's a goddamn genius. Oh, wait, he is smart. My issue was that. I thought he could have sabotaged it. I thought that's mm-hmm. what he was doing. Then last week when he went back, I thought, nope, he's an asshole. Because he knew that's what he had to do because he knew Correct. what was coming. And then when he got mad at uh, Gabriel, mm-hmm. who is the most worthless character in the series next to Morgan, mm-hmm. uh, he got uh, Gabriel and he was pissed at us. And then he told uh, Negan, line them all up. Mm-hmm. Uh, up all the soldiers like the British and just shoot the, the good guys and kill them. And I was like, he sabotaged the bullets. Mm-hmm. And as soon as it happened, they all blew up. The bullets blew up. Mm-hmm. Negan's gun blew up. Uh, I did think, though, in this day and age, that was a hell of a good job of slashing somebody's throat and being able to save them after they were withering there for two minutes. That was pretty damn good. Well, if you notice where the cut was. It wasn't on the it, jugulars. It wasn't on any of the jugulars. It was still in, you know, in, in the very front, very small amount, in, probably into the larynx. So Esophagus Rick is a goddamn larynx. surgeon with he's that a, knife, that piece no, of glass. No, that piece of glass. Yes. He did he's it on able. purpose. He shot the glass out. He's like, you know, I'll fake this guy out. I'll pick up a piece of glass and I'll slash his throat. Good I'll point. talk about Carl. I'll stun him. Well, I did like how Maggie, Daryl, and Jesus are forming their own group to go against Rick soon. Well, they left that insinuation, but they didn't really insinuate what they were going to do. On, she just wanted Negan dead. On Talking Dead, right. they said that she's basically going into the role of the Godfather in the movies. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. You better so, fucking sign her so to a new contract. She's get fat and bloated and speak with cotton in her mouth. Yeah. And then she makes an island of animals uh, that are mutated. It's going to be really hey, bad. One of these days, you may come to me. With a favor. And then, mm-hmm. uh, Jesus, I still say, is not going to help them. He's playing along. I think he's going to be on Rick's side. I thought Daryl would be playing along with it. I think Daryl's had enough Darryl's of Rick. Because Daryl's been a Rick man the whole time. I know, but he's been kind of going against him the last couple of uh, weeks, or months, mm-hmm. uh, or episodes, I should say. Uh, I I enjoyed years. it, though. Yeah, whatever like it years. is. Uh, in the books, they jumped ahead about two and a half years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're going to do a jump, but Rick Kirk, or Robert Kirkman said that he is not going to tell people how long of a jump they are mm-hmm. in the book. Uh, or, I mean, the TV show. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun episode. But it'll be long enough for uh, Morgan to walk out west to the Fear the Walking Dead crossover? Fuck him. Okay. So he walks from Virginia to Texas. He does, does use hold, a car. Hold on a second. Okay. You don't have to go there. Yeah, we're still... Talking about That's the Walking Dead finale. Walking yes, Morgan uh, decides to seclude himself because, again, he doesn't know if he should kill or not. Blah, blah, blah. We've hit this storyline for the 10th time. Morgan, you went from one of the best characters to the war- one of the worst characters. He became Juice on the Sons of Anarchy, That's basically. Right. Uh, well, you know what? PTSD is... I get that. Not a fun thing to I don't get with. that, actually. I don't. But <laughs> at the same time, I don't care about But not for your TV him. show. Exactly. Yeah. He, I don't care about him anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, it was a fun episode. I enjoyed it a lot. It was probably one of my favorite episodes of the last two years. I was like, finally. This sea- this war is over? And, and actually not knowing, well, knowing that there is Negan in the future, mm-hmm. because you guys told me about yes. it with the graphic novels. I actually thought when Rick slashed his throat, I was like, oh shit, they're killing Negan. But he's such a good actor. But then they're like, save him. Okay. Well, that's the reason I thought he would leave because, you know, he tends to do movies, a, a story arc on a show, and then leave. But Jeffrey Dean Morgan, he is a hell of an actor. Uh, Negan in the comic books has a redemption arc. He's not a complete good guy at all. He's still an asshole. Oh, he's a Jamie Lannister. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Is that uh, Winter is Coming? Yes, that yes. is Winter is Coming. He'll be mm-hmm. at the expo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Uh, my down this week is Fear the Walking Dead. I got two. Uh, mm. Because Morgan leaves, and the whole Fear of the Walking Dead episode, I think at least 55 minutes of it, mm. is Morgan getting into Texas. There's a new cowboy guy. He's a ca- kind of a Western guy. I enjoyed him. Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole thing is Morgan. They don't show anyone else except for the last 10 seconds. Mm. And I'm like, oh, my God, we got another fucking Morgan episode on Fear of the Walking Dead. Now he's doing both that shows. That's why it sucked. So on Fear of the Walking Dead, are they in Texas? In Fear of the Walking Dead, they're in Texas. Okay, last I heard, they were on an island somewhere. Yes, then they went to Mexico. I thought they were in Tijuana. Yeah, and then they went to Me- Texas. And then I thought they were in San Diego. I think they did to go there. I don't know. It, it kind of bounces around. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so they did go uh, to, uh, they're in Texas now, and um, I just don't care about Morgan. I like Fear of the Walking Dead better than it did, mm. but I don't care about Morgan. Uh, my other down this week is uh, New Hampshire Low League Baseball. I don't know if anybody saw this. Oh, yeah, I saw that. So, in this league in New Hampshire, Little League, I think there are 10, 10 or 11, I think it is. Uh, there's one girl in the whole league, okay? There's like five teams, five or six teams. I saw a headline for this. Yes. So, in New is Hampshire... It, was the headline clickbait, or no, you're going to explain to me the real story? It was true. I'll it, tell you this. It explained the story. So, basically, uh, girls were playing baseball, not mm. softball, but baseball. And then in the last year, only one girl has started has kept with it. Mm-hmm. So these four or five middle-aged men go to this draft because that's what they do is they draft their little league players in this league, um, you know, just for their teams, basically. You know, I'll mm-hmm. take him. He's my son, you know, blah, blah, blah. Two of the coaches got mad that there's a girl playing. So they devised a plan to hit her in the head. She has a helmet on in, pr- in batting practice. And then that way she'll get upset and cry and basically get afraid of playing again and get stepped in the batter's box so she can quit because they did not want her. Not just hit her, like continually throw the ball at her head. Beaner. I, I, I saw the, the yes, headline yes. was Beaner, intentionally yes. the Beaner. Yeah. yeah. Repeatedly. Two of the other coaches in the room <sighs> did not think that was, um, I don't know, sane. <laughs> so they eventually went and told the other guy, the, the father and all this stuff. So now the two fucking asshole mm. coaches are now being investigated. Good. They should what be. They should be. fucking idiots. Hey, are you I, really that I remember, horrible of a person? I remember going they're back there. to my own childhood. Unfortunately, child- they're there. I remember going back to my own childhood. And realizing the parents that were coaches that taught, that coached me in my little leagues and all that kind of stuff, there are some pretty deplorable, not to steal a, a mm. word from Hillary, but to really say, there are some really deplorable asshole fathers and uh, mothers, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah, it doesn't. And there's out no there gender. in child athletics that mm-hmm. are just fucking assholes. That, you know, now as a grown man, I look back on some of my memories, and I'm sitting there going, how in the fuck was this allowed to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And I, that doesn't surprise me. Even in this day and age, you still have that fucking bullshit going on. My uh, son, a couple years ago, in six, uh, was six and was playing basketball mm-hmm. with the school, mm-hmm. mind you. And he was playing other schools, six. It was instructional. And one of the coaches got kicked out of the league. Mm-hmm. Or out of the game, because he was arguing calls. There's six. Which, there's no traveling at that age. Mm. <laughs> there was no traveling of the ball. Uh, and the, the hoop's like halfway to the yes. floor. <laughs> yes. Yes. Again, my feeling is there's no fucking way six-year-olds should be playing organized basketball. Six years old. It was all instructional. Six-year-olds shouldn't down. be allowed to dunk. But yes. <laughs> this. <laughs> that's right. My kid was dunking. That's why he got mad. <laughs> you know, fucking, that's a charge. Come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, he got fucking thrown out of the game. I'm like, and we have reached a new low here. So yeah, fuck these two fucking coaches in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. Piece of shit. So there you go. That's my two downs this week. Any downs, Blake? Uh, buying a new house sucks, man. I'm just hemorrhaging money. Do you? Would you like to go back to uh, living with your parent or your in-laws? No. Whatever it takes. <laughs> I'll pay. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You can close the vents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you got any downs, Jeff? Uh, my down goes back to uh, going back to the, the hockey realm, and that's losing the uh, our fantasy hockey league uh, championship championship to the GIMP. Nick the GIMP won. Uh, you know, the guy spends 364 days of the year in a box, so I guess he should be able to win. <laughs> well, he does his thing about fantasy hockey. And other fantasies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I kind of have my love-hate relationship with the Blue Jackets because the Blue Jackets decided on the last game of the season to sit a couple of their best players who were starting on my fantasy hockey team thereby eliminating any chance I may have had of actually pulling out a win. Oh, that's, yeah. that's your fault for And therein lies the problems with fantasy sports. Yeah. The, you know, year-end season, you know. Sports, congratulations mm-hmm. on the Browns for re-signing uh, Josh Gordon. Congratulations. I don't know. <laughs> What's the over-under on games before five. his drug suspension? Five. Right off the bat, five. Uh-huh. Five. Uh, let's see, uh, some sad news. Hold on. No, what? Will will Josh Gordon play more games than they win this year? Ooh, I like <laughs> or that. Play more games than they lose. I like that. I'll play uh-huh. more than they win. Uh-huh. Less than they lose. <laughs> uh, I wonder if Vegas has a bet on that. Oh, I bet you there's, <laughs> there's got to be a line. It's in the Randy Quaid from the vacation, Vegas mm-hmm. vacation uh, uh, casinos. Casino, yeah. Guess the number one through ten. Five, seven. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, some sad news. Arlie Army uh, from Full Metal Jacket, best known. He passed away this week. God rest his soul. Yes. It happened in three. Barbara Bush just passed away today. I met Barbara Bush. Yeah. Did you? Yes, I did. Seriously. In uh, the U.S. Embassy in Lisbon, Portugal mm-hmm. with uh, George Sr. Mm-hmm. They are very nice people. They were really, really nice people. Were they nicer than the Dukakis's? I never meant the Dukakis's, but I guess if I had to put them next to each other, uh, he, he, George Bush would probably uh, make a joke and pinch my ass or something like that. Yeah, that know. is true. Uh, Dukakis had a tank, though. Yeah, that's true. That? He, he did, did have a tank. tank and a helmet. It's true. Kind of reminded me of Dudley Moore. He did. <laughs> <laughs> His eyebrows always intimidated me. <laughs> Someone clip those. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, Harry Anderson passed away last night. Uh, Tear. Sad news, too. From Night Court. I never met him, though. No, no, you no. didn't. Uh, that was a shocker. They said he passed away at his house. Natural causes. Yeah, so. what's shocking about natural causes at age 64? 65, yeah, 65, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Now, I never met Harry Anderson, but I know a guy who met Marky Post. And? How was she? In a hotel gym. Okay. Uh, he did say her breasts are very, very perky. Underrated if you oh, didn't pay okay. attention. If you didn't pay attention so to them on the, we, on the TV like, show. We're trying to give respect to Harry Anderson. You're talking about Marky Post. Uh, I, I wasn't talking about the. Did, yeah, I wasn't yeah, talking exactly about what that. you were talking about. Didn't Marky I Post, was. Did, I was complimenting Marky Post based <laughs> upon my friend who met her in a hotel gym. Who is very impressed by? Uh, let me ask you this: her huge tracts of land. <laughs> uh, did Marky Post? She was in a TV show after Night Court, right? I don't think so. I, she did. She may have been. but nothing. I think that was successful. I think mm. she had a cup, two or three shows mm. that might have been picked up. But but nothing really. Because Harry Anderson had dog. Dave's World. Yeah, he did have Dave's World. Ninety eight episodes was, of that. That was kind of cool. Yeah, that was not yeah. bad. It was all right. Based off of the writings of Dave Barry, uh, yeah. the journalist. It reminded me of uh, Everybody Loves Raymond kind of, kind of similar thought. That yeah, came next. It kind of had a mm. similar feel. I like Dave's that. world. I didn't like Everybody Loves Raymond. Fuck him. No. Now, Larroquette okay. had a long TV show yes, series. He had two of them, I think, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He had the John Larroquette show. And I thought he was in something. Oh, he was just Are in that sure last one. Are you sure he was in that one? He was in that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> that checking. also had what? The Chime McBride and 
Daryl Mitchell. They oh, out. Ty McBride. That's right. Um, um, let's see. And then he was just in that last one that uh, got canceled way too early. Yeah, I, I was enjoying that one. I it did was, too. It was like it uh, was. It was. Oh, what's the best word? It was wholesome. Okay, wholesome. Usually, usually to me, is probably a bad word when I hear things described as wholesome. But Americana. But it it it, it there was nothing there to it Pollyanna. Wasn't, it wasn't mean. Pollyanna ish. Eh, no, screw Pollyanna. I hate her. Mm-hmm. No, but yeah, it was. It, it wasn't mean. It wasn't mean spirited. It it was. Um, it gave you the nice warm jibblies. Marky Post played, it was in Hearts of Fire. That's what it was, the okay. political one. Never saw starring it. John, co-starring John Ritter. Uh, she also oh, had... Oh, re- yeah, that John Ritter show. <laughs> <laughs> she also had recurring guest roles on The District and on Scrubs as the mother of Dr. Elliot Reed. So there you go. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, Marky many Post says no Hearts of Fire right, there. I forgot. I will find out. Uh, Marky Post did not die, even though we're talking about her, her TV shows. It was actually Harry Anderson that died. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it was on from 92 to 95. That long? Yeah. Okay. Three seasons. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I would have guessed. I knew it was over one, because I do remember they, like, retooled it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did 54 episodes. 23, 17, and 14. There you go. Uh, let's see, we had a Twitter poll of the week, because you can find us on Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter, and the History of Bad Ideas on Facebook. Take a look. Uh, we have uh, fun pop culture articles, and glaze news and geeks things on both of them. And you can talk to us. Uh, we had Twitter poll of the week. What is your favorite movie role of Arlie Army? Uh, we had Full Metal Jacket, the Toy Story franchise, Saving Silverman, and Mississippi Burning. So and it was a yeah. four-way tie because this tells me it was all zero percent. Oh no, we got. Oh, wow, I've got an updated <laughs> one. You don't oh. even have that one. What? <laughs> I don't have the final, but mine's updated. What so do you not think? All zero. Do you think Full Metal Jacket is the most famous role of his? Oh, definitely was the most famous. Yeah. Okay. Oh, p- yeah. Always lock your. Box. Always lock. Yeah. Always lock your um, foot locker. Foot locker. locker. That's right. Uh, Although that is not the one I voted for. Which one did you vote for? I voted for Saving Silverman. Uh, well, you know <laughs> yeah. what? Okay, here's the funny thing. I would have said that would have came in second. <laughs> this one got a lot of votes. The whole thing did. It was a very impressive run. So we were very happy. And it was only up for eight hours. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for voting. Um, Full Metal Jacket won with 53% of the vote. Not a surprise. I mean, Tor- I mean, he was the first half of that movie. Yes. Yeah. And the first half was the good part of the movie. Yeah. I don't disagree with you on that. Yeah. And I'm not a big war movie fa- movies about war, but I agree with you. The first half was decent. After that, I didn't really care. And once mm. they went to Vietnam, it's like, no, it's not as good. Go back to the first part. It's no Biloxi mm. Blues. <laughs> That's a good thing. Was that Matthew Broderick? It was Matthew okay. Broderick. Yeah, it was no MASH. Yeah. No <laughs> Private <laughs> Benjamin. Uh, <laughs> Are we going to mention every uh, U.S. Black uh, military... Platoon? Uh, <laughs> there was no platoon. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Second place was a two-way tie. It was, it was no Ben Stiller. Tropic Thunder? There was no Tropic Thunder. <laughs> That's good, because that was about two hours too long. Uh, let's see. Full Metal Jacket was number one, 53%. Toy Story franchise and Saving Silverman both tied at 22% evenly. Ooh. I, wanna, 3%, I demand a recount. 3% got Mrs. I want to know. Burning. I want the hanging chads <laughs> counted. So if your name is Chad out there, you better... Recast your vote. Come on, Chad. Get it together. Jason at... uh, Bad Ideas Podcast. Bad Ideas Podcast. Yes. Uh, I don't even remember him in Mississippi. He was the sheriff. The racist sheriff of the town. Um, That's why he only got 3% of the vote. Yeah, probably. It's like, I remember seeing that, like, when it first came out, or when it first mm -hmm. came on HBO or whatnot. So I did see it, but that was 20-some odd years ago. okay. Like, I've seen it probably in the last four years, five years. Yeah. It ages okay, it's a lot slower than I remembered, um, so that was that was the only downside. That's tough because I do remember it being slow. Yeah, it, and that was it's still a decent movie, mm. but it was a lot slow. Gene Hackman was great in it, um, but it was a good film. Saving Silverman, I feel like it's a very up and down movie for me. I love and hate it. It's some funny parts, but overall, I'm not a huge fan of it. But there is a lot of funny scenes in it. Yeah, and the Neil Diamond cover band. <laughs> yeah, and but um, the the funny thing was if you ever seen um, Arlie, you know, Ermy's uh, show on History Channel was it History mail of call. Warfare? Oh, weapons and yeah, mail call. Too. He also did mail call. Yeah, yeah, uh, those are actually pretty interesting. But his best one that he did of that was 
the uh, they did a showdown contest between the AK-47 and the M-16, mm-hmm. and that is true, you know, uh, 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 Marine drill sergeant humor at his best. If you ever get the chance to go watch that episode. That's common earth yeah, when you get it. Yeah, no, no, you would okay. enjoy it. You would enjoy it. It is pretty funny the way it ends in his, uh, you know, decision on, how, you know, what which weapon is better. It's pretty funny. Well, here you go, Blake. You'll like this. Yeah. Uh, Doug, number one fan, said, I liked him on Mail Call on History Channel. Yeah, that was uh, good. Let's see. Mole Man Show. The Mole Man Show. It's a podcast mm-hmm. uh, at Mole Man Show. Uh, I hope I know everyone's going to pick uh, Full Metal Jacket, but Saving Silverman, he was hilarious and hooked up with Jack Black at the end. <laughs> Oops! Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, don't ruin the the movie. Uh. Christian and Damon's amazing podcast show. Uh, they said Sheriff Hoyt from the Sh- uh, Chainsaw remake. He was decent. He in that. was in that. Yeah, I do he was about the that. only positive part of that. Yeah, the rest of that movie was terrible. He was actually the best part of it. Uh, there's a car right there you could just jump in and run away no 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 we're going back here behind the chainsaws <laughs> mm-hmm. thank you commercial uh but he was good in that i enjoyed him in that one and there was a cat taking pictures a lot <laughs> so uh let's get some listener feedback uh, it's time now for the bomb listener feedback Brought to you this week by lebron james's idea of guys sitting in a barbershop talking about sports because that's such an original concept. Are you just mad that LeBron's leaving your Cleveland Cavs? Uh, no comment. Okay, just ask. In case did, he's a did, fan, I don't want him to be upset did, about did, that. Did I miss something? Just, just keep going. Nope, don't do it. It's down the hall in the sports <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I mean, now there's like been like three movies about guys in a barber shop. <laughs> it's down or the hall. Bits in a barber shop. Or sports cast called Jock It. Sanford just, and Son. I mean, well, didn't like. Ten years ago, LeBron James do a bit about being a guy in a barber shop. Yes, yes. They didn't like Why Eddie Murphy. Bring it up, Jeff, I just oh. told you to bring it up. <laughs> Coming to America. That'd be, uh, be fifteen dollars. Well, right. it's eight fifty. Well, of course, he's going to do it because in 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 certain cultures in America, it's a very important uh, part. That's of That's not the what society. I'm talking about, Jeff. I have no clue what you're yeah, talking he, about. He has all right. No, 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 no. no. Your feedbacks have hidden meanings behind them. You have to go look this shit up to understand what I'm talking about. You know, you want me to explain it to him no, or no? No. Okay. You know, Jamarcus Russell, <laughs> yes. uh, the number one pick who made like $50 million from the Oakland uh, Raiders. Yes. Uh, he the guy, the guy that baffled, you know, buffooned Al Davis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he he uh, goes to, he lives in Louisiana, where he's from. Yeah. And he goes into the sm- uh, the town that he's from. Yes. Every, every Wednesday and sits in the same barbershop. Yeah. It's a haircut. And yeah. they said, there was a sport, sport, uh, Sports Illustrated article about him. And he sits there pretty much all day on that Wednesday, mm-hmm. every Wednesday. And they talk past college football highlights of him. I believe it. And he just sits there talking. And they talk sports. I believe it. That guy, and probably, like, and that guy probably hasn't paid for a haircut in 20 years either. That guy... That is a beautiful life, I guess. Just goes in, eh, nothing else better to do. Oh, he, yeah. won, he hit the jackpot. He won he the did. lottery. He did. As long as he didn't blow his money. And I don't think he did. And they said yeah. Louisiana is pretty easy, like yeah. a low yeah. um, cost, of cost of living. So they said, even if he has $15 million, <laughs> as long as he buy, you know, is smart, which he's not, but as long as he kept it pretty close, he was fine. But I just thought that was funny. Every Wednesday he goes to the same barbershop, gets a haircut, just sits there and bullshits mm-hmm. all day. Must be nice. I can't imagine yeah. getting a haircut weekly. Well, I he, think he just goes there well, with if the you, ego. If you watch the show Atlanta, there's a very funny episode where the main character goes <laughs> into a barbershop for a haircut. Yeah. And the whole episode is him with the barber all day running around doing shit until he finally gets his haircut. <laughs> and he's in the, some of the most absurd situations. I recommend go go watching that episode. It is, F, it is fucking hilarious. But anyways, we're not talking about that stuff. We're talking about listener feedback. I mean, this is this is the most important part of the podcast because this is where people who listen send stuff into us, and if they wanted to send stuff into us, where where do you send it to? You can send it to other than yelling at your car stereo or iPhone. Hey, homie! Uh, You can tweet us at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. You can email us at hobiepod at gmail dot com. You can also send us uh, some questions on. History Facebook. of Bad Ideas on Facebook. 
Uh, so there you go. Don't do it on Tumblr. Yeah, probably not Tumblr. We don't check it that much. Uh, ever. And uh, we still have our episodes up there, though. Yeah, our episodes yeah. still go up for anybody who, for that one guy who accidentally subscribed to us, he yeah. might still get <laughs> highlights. Uh, we're also on YouTube. But uh, no video. It's only audio. And if true. you post anything, I don't think any of us are reading it. <laughs> At the expo. I will be uh, posting some video on the History of Bad Ideas pod, uh, Ooh. YouTube channel. Ooh. But anyways, uh, we're also on uh, nerdly.co.uk. I better bikini wax. Good day, governor. Chicky, chicky cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Becca. Uh, yes, so uh, we also have, I have articles up there, uh, Game On. Uh, my son and I do game board reviews, tabletop games. And then uh, I also do a Black Lightning reviews. I do. Every week. And this week is the season finale. Kaboom. I'm excited. I love it. Uh, we're also on his uh, Tangent Bound Network. Tangent Bound. Uh, mm. We're also on Danger. Danger. Danger Entertainment. Entertainment. WeBeGeeksPC.com. Every Wednesday, our new episode releases. And... Some internet radio show. We Be Geeks Somewhere. PC, uh, we Be... Yeah, not We Be no. Geeks. That would be <laughs> Geek Life Radio. Uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain. Ooh. Nope, <laughs> west. Hold on. No, 8 a.m. Mountain. Okay. 7 a.m. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pacific. So there you go. That's where you can find us. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio. They're trying to make a comeback. And uh, anything else, Google Play. So thank you for listening. Give us a review on iTunes. It really helps us out. We appreciate it. And please respond back to us and give us some questions and that. Uh, comments, uh, what you like about the show. Um, that's about it on that. Complain. Don't, no, yeah. no, don't complain. Yeah, any complaints, uh, send to Jason at Graphic Novice. I thought it was uh, Mikael Leal. Oh, and Mikael Leal. <laughs> and Graphic Novice. So yeah. there you go. Um, and, and exactly, if you enjoy listening to the podcast, tell a friend. And then after they listen to us, apologize. Yes. Write a review. <laughs> Uh, let's do some listener feedback. Oh, we start off listener feedback with this guy named Doug. Number one fan. A pants. Formerly known as. Can you give yourself a nickname? He said, uh, I will be in Walt Disney World next week. What souvenirs do you need? You need something from Blue Avatar Land? Uh, Pandora, uh, Avatar Land, I'm excited about. I would like that. I'm not. Need some blue mud from Avatar Land? That would be awesome. Uh, he is in Disney World again, um, so this is his fifth time in the last seven months. So that's yeah, good. I, yeah, I can't he, make. He I, did I, sell the soul of his eldest son. He did for a lifetime pass or something I bet like his that. His eldest son. I think I probably would sell his soul too for yeah. Disney. So it's either that, sell your son, mm-hmm. or take a twelfth mortgage out. Which mm-hmm. one do you do? It's a tough call. Yeah. Does he have any daughters? Uh, yes, one. Has he hoarded her out yet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That's not what I meant. She's, what, seven? Moving on. What do we got? Pop culture podcast. Hey, Roy Morris's Sex Traffic Court. Down the hall. Hey, that's for Jim, who's not with us this evening. No, because he's actually in traffic court. Actually, he wrote that joke in for me to read. I didn't come up with that disgusting joke myself. I cannot wait to number one fan Doug comes on mm. the show next time yes. and chokes you with his ape hands. <laughs> oh, you know what? One. I'm okay with that. I completely fit around my neck. Yeah, I know, and I'm okay with this. Yeah. I'm okay with this. Well, actually, my souvenir, I want Walt's head on a stick. Is it? Fr- it's frozen, though. I Walt, know. Like a popsicle. Exactly. Mm, good old Walt. Mm. <laughs> but you put the Mickey Mouse ears on his head. Mm. Did you ever see those... Oh. Those Pinterest fails of like the frozen Bart Simpson, you yes. know, the heads and the more and Mickey, else. Mickey yes. Mouse heads, you know, frozen popsicles. That's what I want. Except Walt. I'll try backtrack now. His, yeah, his his googly, googly eyes. eyes. And Jeff and I would just sit back and watch. <laughs> he has every right now. Uh, next Doug. one. <laughs> next swing one. away, Meryl. Swing away. Yes. Next one is uh, from the. Uh, <laughs> You're a little flustered now, aren't you? Pulp. <laughs> Pop. Pulp. Pulp. Pulp Culture Podcast. Yes. Pop, the Pop Culture Podcast. T P C C at uh, Doug's Apans dot com. Says, uh, do you ever? <laughs> do you ever? Do you ever get tired? <laughs> You're going. Ah. Well, apparently ah. Blake's amusing himself. <laughs> do you ever get tired of doing? <laughs> Do you ever get tired of doing this podcast? <laughs> I get tired of people hitting yeah. the table. I'm about to say I didn't until about 
20 seconds ago. <laughs> Uh, it is sometimes in some weeks it is a little tough to get you know going, but yeah. as soon as we get on the podcast, I feel pretty <clears throat> yeah. happy and excited to get. Yeah, I don't, I don't get tired of doing the podcast. I get <laughs> tired of the commitment, the, the 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 having to you know drive to the Bob Studios and then drive back, and the entire night is dedicated to doing this. Yes. So, but we appreciate you. Oh, thank you. So, thanks for coming out. Thanks for coming out. Uh, but then I get yelled at if I do a WrestleMania one because I'm, you know, deserting the team. I didn't say you were... Well, yeah, they did say you were... Yeah, yeah, shut the fuck up. I I said, oh my God, we're talking an entire episode about WrestleMania. Anyways, (laughs) you didn't. But no, I mean, it uh, it is a lot of work, uh, but it is a lot of fun. So every time I'm like, oh my God, we got another night of this because just... You know, we've been doing 224 episodes, haven't missed a week. That's a labor of love. And, uh, but things pay off. It works well. So, For your, yeah, it pays but, off. But when the IOUs. <laughs> but when the intern makes a mistake and we're screaming at each other in, in our ch- private chats and sometimes even... On Twitter. On Twitter. <laughs> it makes it fun. Yeah. That's right. If I didn't Since have... Blake is not on Twitter, he didn't But he does the, follow us. If I didn't get the... I, you know, you know, chance to ignore Jason weekly. I don't know what I would do <laughs> with my life. It is kind of odd, like, if we have a pre-taped one, like a episode one or something, you guys are doing a Game of Thrones or, you know, in six years when the series comes back. Uh, I always feel like, oh, it's kind of nice having a Tuesday off, but at the same time, oh, I got Man. a lot of pent-up frustration I got to talk about. <laughs> like fucking New Hampshire coaches. Fuck them. Uh, New Hampshire. It's not all New Hampshire, just two idiots. New Hampshire, America's colon. It's a large slice of northeastern America. Fuck those coaches. Because it's such a small place. Two is like a lot. Like a them. Oh, yeah, that is like a large percentage it of is. the population. Yeah, that's know. what I was looking for. Yeah. Anyways, what else we got? <sighs> that's it. Have a good night, folks! <laughs> <laughs> no, we got uh, next from uh, Besada Geek. You know they won an award. Uh, that was actually Pittsburgh Nerd. Yeah, Besotted won a, an award too, didn't he? He won a floppy. Yeah. Oh, I thought he meant like a real award. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to their podcast. It's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> no, he himself won the coveted Canadian of the Year floppy. He is. Uh, what would you like the Canadian of the Year to do next week? He is. Uh, we haven't, to we haven't given our demands. You know recently. what we have not gotten recently? Yes. And I blame former Canadian of the Year Nickel for mm-hmm. this, but now that we got a new Canadian of the Year, mm-hmm. a, a much better report. Canadian. We need a hockey report. If we could get a hockey report from Besada Geek, that would be great. Three to five minutes, uh, <laughs> you know, just to let you know, uh, so you can stretch it, so we can and, add it. And he has to speak Canadian. What's hey? that all boot? Sorry, I got some tiger money for you. He must. He must give us the uh, the hockey report while wearing a toque. Yes, sure. Moving on, okay, what else would be Sonic Geek has? Oh, I was going to move on. Oh, wait, he does have a thing. He said uh, Nick Cage. That's uh, uh, Nicholas Cage. Mm-hmm. Says uh, he, Nick Cage, thinks he would make a good Joker. Thoughts? Apparently Nick Cage needs to stop having thoughts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because that is completely false. Um... Actually, I feel like he is playing the Joker in real life, minus the crime spree. Just saying. Did now, he's you... not even charismatic enough to be the Joker in real life. Uh, did you know that they actually made a new Joker, the official Joker, in Gotham this week? Really? Yes. I read that Jerome's article. brother. I read an article. Oh, Jerome I, isn't the Joker. He but died. He fell off of a uh, building. Again? again? Yes, he died again. Again, he died again. They killed yes. him a second time? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we, we hate you so much, we're going to kill you a yeah. second time. And, oh, we're going to replace him with his twin, twin brother. brother. Which he didn't have in any of the previous stories. He, he never existed until now. It was called George Lucas wrote it <laughs> into a corner. <laughs> it was called Ryan Johnson. Hey, hey, Oh, hey. sorry. Did you like the Ryan Johnson thing? Obi-Wan, I need your help. No. No. The end. The end. Directed by Ryan, <laughs> written and directed by Ryan Johnson. Yes, exactly. That was on our Facebook page, little thing. Yes. I did. I also, you guys enjoy my uh, joke with the you know, angry old wizard comes back to yes, make jokes yes. on his <laughs> nephew. Yeah, you yeah. should all see this on our Facebook page. Anyways, keep going. 
Yeah. Uh, next we have. <laughs> Did you just become the penguin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We have next, regarding the top five hated characters on TV, this was uh, an episode... Last week? Last week. Our most hated characters. Top five most hated characters. Apparently, there was a lot of of responses, and here are more. Mark Tinkler. Thank you, Mark Tinkler, said Joffrey from the Game of Thrones. I agree. Uh, From the You Can Rewind It podcast... You know, are there other podcasts on VHS tapes? Yes, yes. Uh, this really? one's actually on beta. Ooh. They said uh, any character that starts off fairly normal but then becomes so ridiculous you can't even recognize them. Like Urkel? I was just going to say Urkel. There you go, just like Urkel. Uh, the Mockers podcast. Mock and Bird. Mm. Yeah. Mock and Bird, yeah. I'm sure that's their theme song, isn't it? It is now. Uh, Sam from Different Strokes. Oh, fuck Sam. Mm -hmm. Fuck that whole show. That show was awful. That show wasn't awful. You're awful. Until Sam got there. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Charlotte Ray was on that show. Oh, that's true. And little did she know, she'd go on to host a school full of uh, boarding school girls. That's good. (laughs) (laughs) Which had Molly Ringwald on for one season. And George Clooney. Yeah. Uh, the Odd Dad Out. He said, any, add a kid from any sitcom. I agree How with many you that. sitcoms have they added a young, adorable kid? Eight? Was that the kid's and name? Many of them. Seven? Seven, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, same thing. Destroys the show yes. every single well, time. Speak that, I, I thought that you were answering his question when he said, How many sitcoms? Oh. And you said, Eight? And I'm like, I think it was more than eight. I think it was more than eight, but I'm, I was going with it. Uh, <laughs> the next one is uh, follows up on that answer, actually. Uh, actually, it followed up from the Mole Man show. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, That effing Oliver from the Brady Bunch. Mm-hmm. Fucking Oliver. Yeah. Not that the Brady Bunch was highbrow entertainment, but yeah. my God, that kid mm-hmm. was annoying. Especially by the time he showed up. Like yeah. six, six episodes with Cousin Oliver. Yeah. No, that's annoying. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty much already canceled by the time <laughs> they brought him on. <laughs> that's the title of our show tonight. Six episodes with Cousin Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, moving on. Uh, moving on to our uh, most enlightened listener, Des Hassing. Oh, Des. Uh, Des says, Disney with uh, Walt's head on a stick, is donating money to the Boys and Girls Club of Oakland in the name of Black Panther to open a STEM center. Congratulations. Thank Isn't you. it like a science, technology, mm-hmm. something, yeah. something? Oh, I thought it had something to do with stem cells. <laughs> That's yes. not allowed in America. Oh. <laughs> you get your, your yes. radical thoughts to Europe. That's right. They're, they're stealing boys and girls stem cells. <laughs> Why are we not funding this? <laughs> to implant in Walt Disney's head on a stick. <laughs> I'm sorry, this would cure all what? Yeah. Why are we not funding it? <laughs> sorry. Moving on. STEM, Down the hall. You know, science, math, yeah. technology, entertainment. <laughs> I don't know what the E stands music. for. Yeah, music. <laughs> well, I love how meta that is. Considering how much Black Panther is likely to make, is one million a large enough sum, or should they commit more? Jesus, Des, what yeah. did you donate? I will never <laughs> argue for someone trying to donate any amount of money to any charity. Because they didn't have to in the first place. Exactly. I like how this is a feel-good story. It's about education, and you got Blake and I being fucking idiots. I don't know what STEM is. <laughs> what I donate things? to the bank every week. <laughs> STEM. Science. Oh, STEM bank. Oh, wait. Wrong Where, one. Where's the STEM bank? <laughs> <sighs> okay, moving on. Uh, we do have uh, one we have something from. Get ready. From Nick Albright. You ready for this, Blake? Do you have the music? No, because I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That didn't work. And there went the music. <laughs> he, he, sexy. he can't read the, uh, the question and play the music at the same time. And that's how he normally operates. Here we yeah. go now. Well, fuck this music. Anyways, Jeff. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> 
with an <laughs> elephant. <laughs> With three balls. Jeff's mm. two point five four fan. Bootylicious. How many balls do you have? You walk him and pitch to the rhino. Oh yeah. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> I like that question. Oh really? I was about to say, wow, that was an old joke. Thanks, Nick. Wow! <laughs> hey, I, fans, throw in your listener feedback. Fuck you! <laughs> I, 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 I expect <laughs> deep, introspective thoughts in the the, the uh, Albright uh, section of the film, wow. you know, the film of the podcast. And I mean, that was just an old joke. <laughs> you know, I, I can't wait until Spotify you know, like cuts out this entire section after they realized I was doing Nine Inch Nails. I don't think it was close oh. enough to. <laughs> Mm. Hey. We got some listener reviews. <laughs> I'll cut nice. that out. Well, that this one actually, when I stop it, it starts a new new thing. I just thought it was filthy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, every oh fuck, I almost forgot what I was doing. Hey, this is John from the Pop Culture Cafe. And Scott from the Pop Culture Cafe. And we have a little review that we're sending to the guys at the uh, Hobie here, and we're going to talk about not a movie this time, but a uh, stand-up comedy special from Ricky Gervais. Yeah, because I was going to fuck up the last name. Yep. Ricky Gervais. He uh, has a new stand-up, the first one in seven years, called Humanity. And, my God, it's good. It's good, and if you're offended, don't watch it. Yeah, if you easily get offended, it, if it's you're not even S- easily. SJW? Yeah. Don't bother. I mean, well, I mean, just a normal offense. If you can't laugh at anything, oh yeah, then you shouldn't listen to it. But you know what? When, when I was watching him, I was thinking, I had forgotten how goddamn good this guy was. Yeah. Yeah. And he's another guy, like D- uh, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. No, I'm not changing. I'm going to do the same yeah. stand-up. Same I'm not going to. You can. And he brings that up during his show. He talks about Twitter, and he actually... He took all the shit that he deals with on Twitter right, and, and it turned it into show. comedy gold. Yeah, yeah. And that awesome, like the sections with the... Uh, the animals. Animals. Yeah. And his, the gentle- his, his love for animals and, and yes. the people pissing on him because of what he said about it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, also the, <laughs> the evangelical. Uh, that's going to wa- yeah. go watch him raped in hell. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he turned that into comedy gold. Yeah. It's just something that he saw on Twitter. Yeah. So he's doing it right. Yeah. But... uh. Yeah, and I love how he incorporates animal bits into his shows. Yeah. And my wife was watching it with me, and she laughed the hardest at those because yeah. that's exactly what yeah. an animal will be thinking. Are yeah. you kidding me? I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life? <laughs> the very start, yeah. Yeah. Now, for me, it wasn't all bang, bang on. But there was parts where he, where he talked about stuff that I got a real big laugh out oh, of. I watched it twice. Did you? I yeah. laughed out loud. It's it's one of the few stand-ups A have watched twice. And I laughed at different things that I missed the first time around. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just, I found, it was really weird. He seemed like he's, he's, he's serious, but in the same tone, at the same time, he's working to his joke. Yeah. And, but he's going, but it's like pointing out that, see how silly this is? Yeah. See how silly? And he, he makes the big point about what I hate about Twitter. It's contact. Yes, it's context. And, 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 and how things are read by the other person online. Yeah. So. I mean, I, uh, fantastic reasoning to joke nuances. Yeah. Like, you're not making fun of this. You're, it's in a certain light. Yeah. And, um. He went from pissing on one. Yeah. Then pissing on that person's point of view. Yeah. To then trying to defend that same person. Yeah. Because of taking out of contents, because the way Twitter is read. I mean, he actually, and this is a bit of a spoiler, he, he took the piss out of Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, and yeah. I did, honestly, I didn't have a problem with that because that type of reality TV bullshit, and to be honest, and when yeah. I say bullshit, even for me, yeah. I'm not talking about a trans person. Uh. I'm talking about the circus that was around that entire yeah. procedure mm-hmm. and that entire lifestyle. Yeah. And he took the piss out of it, and he did it so brilliantly, you yeah. know, before, when she was Bruce Jenner. You yeah. Know, and, and I learned, that's but, another thing, I learned stuff every time I see mm-hmm. it. I had never heard the term dead naming. Yeah. Which is the stupidest. Stupid it's fucking so thing. stupid. And yeah. he, he, of course, he made fun of it. Yeah. But, uh, 
that's one thing I noticed when I watch that. It's incredibly intelligent, and I always learn something that I didn't know before going in. And he took that teaching moment and made me piss myself laughing. Yeah. So, so, so we'll both recommend. Oh watching God, it. absolutely! If you're yeah. looking for a comedian that's going to make you think, laugh out loud, and that's another thing. He had that audience because there wasn't one. Oh my God! Yeah. I can't believe it. it wasn't yeah. one time that the audience gasped. He mm-hmm. made them laugh at every single thing he brought mm-hmm. up, and some of those contract, uh, some of those subjects were very controversial. But I think it's the way he did it. Yes. You know. Context. Yeah. You know. You put it. You showed it, and it t- context. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Just, hey, if you got Netflix, check it out. Absolutely. So, um, so again, I'm John. I am Scott for the Pop Culture Cafe. If you're interested, you can check out our show. It's on iTunes and all the pop catchers. Just type it into a pop, even type it into your Google machine as yep. uh, the Google machine, and then it will come up and you can find us. All right, thanks, all right. folks. Take care. Well, thank you for that review, guys. Yes, thank you. Uh, we still have some listener reviews that were provided to us in print. I like those guys, and I appreciate them for sending in their reviews. The Ricky Gervais stand-up. Do you like Ricky Gervais? He's hit and miss, and lately for me he's been miss. I haven't seen his newest mm-hmm. one. Okay, I was just wondering. I, I think he was still uh, like uh, writing the coattails of the American version of The Office. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is correct. That's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, so we, we have some uh, listener reviews in print, which means I have to read. Uh, this is Kevin at Cincy Explorer. He said, uh, don't spend money to see Truth or Dare. Was a typical scary movie, but of the 90s, 2000s variety. Oh, I guess uh, so. I guess it must not be good. But he's not done yet. Oh. Kevin. It has a moral component, but that's it. All the scares were predictable, and ending was Blah. Wait until DVD or streaming. Rating one and a half thumbs out of two. I think that's one half thumbs. One half thumbs out of two. Oh. Point five, Blake. Point five. Uh, I really had no desire to see Truth or Dare, and he did state, though, that was because he had the movie pass and he had nothing else to do. Ah, so it wasn't If you don't use that movie money. pass, you're not getting your money's worth. That's right. Every that's movie right. you see, it costs less every time. And uh, you can get us... At Bad Ideas Podcast, if you like, send in your uh, movie reviews. Uh, Pop Culture Cafe just did theirs, which we appreciate. Their audio one. And uh, Kevin from Cincy Explorer. Kevin actually has another one for next week, too. So there you go. It's already lined up for next week. Yeah. So we appreciate the uh, reviews because we don't see everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that TPC actually did uh, a stand-up special, so that was nice. Yes. So I want to know if you like the Chris Rock stand-up special. So. You know, if I did a comedy, oh, if I ever did a comedy special, I would call it the sit down special. I get it because you're funny. Because <laughs> you're not standing. No, because everybody's sitting down. I don't get it. Uh, what else you got? Would you be sitting down when you did it? No, I'd be standing up. Duh. <laughs> Bill Cosby just came out with one. It's called the knocked out one. <laughs> you know, I went to go uh, see Bill the, Cosby. You put, you put it in the bottom, and then they go to sleep. <laughs> And then I don't know what happens. I don't know. I plead the fifth because I'm innocent. I'm b- put the roll hip bone in the pudding. In the pudding pot. <laughs> in the pudding. I got chocolate and fudge swirl. Really, woman? It's okay to eat. That that white stuff is just pez on the front. Yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. Uh, I saw. In the pudding pot. I saw Bill Cosby in person. I don't remember much of the evening. Well, I'm sure <laughs> it was because you were so excited. I did have a pudding to pot. <laughs> You just met me, and so you were excited. That would be the reason. And I was with my wife. Did she have fun? I think so. Okay. Well, that was good. That was good. Uh, that was reminding me of an episode of Criminal Mind. <laughs> taking me out here. All I know is I woke up with just a sweater on. <laughs> it's a horrible lady sweater. <laughs> I did it. Sweater. Hey, guys, what are you talking about? Can I come in? No, Kevin Spacey. You go over there. You're creepy. I'm not creepy. I just got boys in the basement. Boys. Mm. Hey guys, I'm Harvey Feinstein. What's going on? Or Weinstein, whatever. I don't even know my name anymore. (laughs) What's going on? Stay behind the potted plant, Harvey. (laughs) Oh, it's a ficus. Oh, come here, ficus. Oh, 
ficus. Well, so now I'm interested in what a conversation between Harvey Weinstein <laughs> and Harvey Firestein would sound like. Hi, guys! It's Harvey Firestein! I was in Independence Day! <laughs> Why do you sound so much like me, Bill Cosby? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, now I don't want to know what that Hi, sounds I'm, like. I'm Kevin Spacey. Uh, did you guys see my latest movie? Uh, no? No? Uh, no, because you weren't even in it. I know. I got replaced. <sighs> got replaced like a seven-year-old boy. <sighs> Anyways, Chris Richardson. I want to be in the new Pinocchio movie. <laughs> you may recognize Chris Richardson. He's the chief pisshead from uh, 365 Flicks. He uh, he got to help ruin episode 222 and talked about WrestleMania with Jason for a couple hours. So did number one fan, Doug. Yeah, brought new meaning to British Bulldogs. Oh, the British Bulldogs. Love them. Love them. <sighs> and their, and their cheaper, cheaper cousin version, the Junkyard Dog. Moving on. Uh, which Hobie host will get bitten in turn first in the coming zombie apocalypse? And who will be the whiniest survivor? Well, I'm getting bitten first, ain't I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's all on the green. Yeah, the fat ones always go first. <laughs> exactly. And then I'm second. Mm. Jim's third, and then Blake. Blake would probably be in a bunker. I feel pretty secure about that. Mm-hmm. He probably has a bunker in his house. When I move to Montana, mm. I will be safe. So, got a couple years. You think years. Jim will be the whiniest survivor? Because I was going to guess you. Well, I know it's me, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's for the sake of uh, the show, since he's not here, fuck him. He's going to be the whiniest. <laughs> yeah, Jim, it's you. Yeah. He can't rent here no. anymore. If he, thought, if he thought his bar patrons didn't tip before, wait until be, they become zombies. And then he'd still be <laughs> serving them drinks and then not get any tips. Still be spinning. <laughs> Spinning the, shot the wheel. Spinning the shot wheel with no tips. Beer. That's right. Moving on. And we're going to wrap this up with uh, Professor Number One at Doctor Number One. It says, with having picks one and four in the draft, how will the Browns screw this up? By drafting the wrong people? By drafting? I say you never know until it actually happens. I think the Browns should do the Minnesota Vikings uh, plan from a couple years ago. Oh. Just not draft. Forget to turn in on time. Turn in and vote. Yeah. Turn it in. Actually, you know, you never know how they're going to screw this up. I mean, that's the beauty of being a Browns don't fan. draft a quarterback out of don't know how it's going to turn out. And you know it's going to turn out pretty bad. Except, you know what? No matter what, take Mac. Mac. Take Mac. No matter what. Which Who's one's Mac? Mac? Uh, the guy from Draft Day. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because oh. Kevin Costner is just a genius when it comes to football. That's right. That's the only time I walked out feeling good about a Browns draft. <laughs> <laughs> and it was imaginary fucking movie. Well, you know what? I hope you guys do well this year. I really do. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I don't think they are. Yeah, it might give us something in the state to cheer for come football season. That's true. Uh, just to let you know that uh, the... Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets are down two to one. What? Damn it. Oh, so I just let you guys know. I blame you. Although they've come back in every previous game, but that's right. And they're going to be back this game. They're no Vegas though. Vegas is looking good. They're Vegas is home. looking real good. Good for them. Good for them. I'm glad they're. Uh, I would just well. be embarrassed to be fans of a team that's been around for over 20 years now. I think. Mm-hmm. How long have the Blue Jackets been around? No, Long. no, no, ninety nine. So nineteen yeah. years now yeah. or so, yes. and then the uh, Vegas comes in and wins their first season. Yeah, really. <laughs> I hate that shit. Okay, well, let's go do some face off. I think we even got theme music for it. I'd like to take his his face. From Doug. He has face-off. Basically, you take teams or people or fictional or whatever, and they face each other. They now, this battle. Is, this is a physical yes. confrontation. Cool. Based on last week, we were talking about how annoying Scrappy-Doo was. Scrappy-Doo versus Boo-Boo. Hey, Boo-Boo. I like Boo-Boo Bear, but unfortunately, I think in a physical confrontation, Scrappy-Doo would use his puppy power and win. I see. I feel like uh, Boo 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 
would only have to get one one bite in because he's a bear, and it would get it would slow him down, a scrappy down, and he would kill him. Uh, Boo Boo's a small and timid bear. I still think he could do it. I I I, I agree. As much as I would root for Boo Boo, Boo Boo yes. Scrappy's gonna kick his ass. And the only way it would work is if Boo Boo could convince Scrappy to I don't know kill himself or something, mm. and. Scrappy, I think, is just too dense to like understand English because he always ignored Shaggy and Scooby when they said, "Oh no, we need to leave," and he would always run headfirst into danger. So, like a paladin, <laughs> <laughs> Boo Boo Bear, my paladin. <laughs> Actually, it's Scrappy Doo. Scrappy Doo. Sorry, he's Scrappy Doo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lawful <laughs> stupid. If Boo Boo was a D and D class, what would Boo Boo be? Boo Boo class. Yeah. Hmm. He's not charismatic <laughs> enough to be a bard. <laughs> not uh, even a hireling. <laughs> an elf. <laughs> not even NPC. <laughs> he doesn't. He nope. he might be like the guy that runs the uh, general store where you run in to buy your starting. Uh, not even the guy equipment. that runs the general store. He'd be like. Boo boo, come on! He he could run a general. He'd store. He'd be like the stock boy. <laughs> okay, the stock boy at the general store for fresh did you, produce. Did you guys say stock boy? Where's the stock boy? I can help him. I can get him into the business. Kevin Spacey, get out of here. Sorry, I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> My ride. Oh, by here. by the way, I am reading a book about the Templar history. Mm-hmm. You and boo boo was in it? No, Scrappy <laughs> was. Oh. <laughs> Do you know how many times that order fucked itself over with bad leadership? 17. How many leaders have they had? Lots. Well, yeah. <laughs> 12. Charging into, like, guaranteed loss situations. Uh, you sit there and you read this, like, oh, my God. How many haystacks do they jump into? No haystacks. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. Cause but a lot of death traps. See, you were reading a book about Templars. I was playing a video game yeah. about them, so it worked oh. out better. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. That's right. They, they, I was disappointed in the fact there wasn't a lot of jumping into hay carts. <laughs> well, hay wagons. I feel like the guards are coming. Jump. And, and straw piles. <laughs> and the water. Uh, let's do some news of the geek. And Jeff, you got your news back? It's time for another installment of the news of the geek. Isn't it great to have that music back? It is. Thanks, Heno. Uh, Let's see, news of the geek. And if you got a story that you would like us to talk about on our future podcast, send it over to us. Uh, We would be more than happy to take listener submissions on that. News of the geek. Famed, this might be my favorite article of the week. Famed high score gamer and douchebag extraordinaire, allegedly. Billy Mitchell, best known for his leading role in The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters documentary, was officially stripped of his Donkey Kong and other video game high scores and banned from submitting scores to the world's largest tracker of video games records following a decision that he cheated, Twin Galaxies announced today. Now, Tw- how did he cheat? Twin Galaxies is the one, the end-all for them and Guinness book of world records um they are the ones that track all these records and twin galaxies have been around since the late 70s with this rolling twin galaxies can no longer recognize billy mitchell as the first million point donkey kong record holder the group wrote it in its announcement according to our findings steve weeby would be the f- official first million point record holder uh steve is actually uh the good guy of the documentary because he actually is like a family man and he is not obsessed with it well he is yeah, but he's not saying, d- yeah he's obsessed with but it. he's not a douchebag yeah. like billy is allegedly uh, the i think they're i think they're all douchebags no offense to you people who are continuing to try to get high scores of video games of 30 40 years ago do not mock george costanza and frogger he was the high score uh the decision comes after months of research by the administrators of twin galaxies and the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, according to a sta- statement released by the group this past Thursday, the group writes in a statement released today that uh, uh, Mitchell's famous Donkey Kong score of 1,047,200 was not achieved on an arcade machine, a requirement for Twin Galaxies and Guinness, but rather through the use of emulation? Emulation? Emulation software. The allegations against Mitchell, first brought up by Jeremy Young who was with Twin Galaxies, uh, filed a dispute in February saying the group meticulously tested and investigated the disputed case assertions as well as a number of relevant contingent factors. They also say, uh, basically, basically breaks down Twin Galaxies and three other independent investigators 
uh, including the person Mitchell brought in on his own behalf, <laughs> all concluded that Jeremy Young's analysis is right. He did not play on a real Donkey Kong hardware machine, and the version he played on can be easily manipulated. So that's what it broke down. Yeah, I think I remember reading about that in February when the accusation mm-hmm. first came out, and they said they w- were able to like go to like super slow frame by frame and watch h- h- how the uh, pixels the, moved. Yeah, how, how the, the the screen like when the screen first came up. Yeah, how it uh, you know was drawn onto you know the, mm-hmm. the graphics drawn onto the screen, and they could tell by you know. The, the split seconds that, you know, some things were going in the wrong order that they were supposed to be going. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Billy seems Mitchell. like a big waste of time. <laughs> 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 Billy Mitchell, though. Has Somebody been, does. He did release a state of uh, Facebook Live or some uh, statement stating that, you know, he is going to... I know what I did, and I'm proud. Yeah, and he said he's going to get back into it, and uh, he's got his own investigation. They found some <laughs> some amazing things. And uh, the best part is, though, on this one, the the guy that Mitchell even brought in said, no, you cheated. But he found some new people. This is like on the level of the whole Mueller Russian investigation, man. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. No, it never yeah, happened. Billy's like, fake news. <laughs> Billy. Uh, good old Billy. Please fade away now. Uh, let's see. Per, per the Washington Post. Word that the world. Word. That the country's oldest continuously operating candy company might shut down as people suddenly hoarding Necco wafers. I've never ate one of these, I don't think, willingly. Despite the pop, <laughs> the lack of popularity amongst everyone. I mean, these, these are the ones that come in the little tube packs of wafers with yeah. the wax paper They're wrapping. They're awful. Oh, the, the, yeah, chalk is the best yeah. flavor they come in, I think. <laughs> The chalky candy flavors, chocolate, licorice, and wintergreen. Oh, God, wintergreen? That sounds awful. Have been described as tropical drywall and plaster surprise, according to the Wall Street Journal. The last month's announcement that the 170-year-old New England confectionery... I'm going confederate. Confectionery. The New England Confederate (laughs) Company might shut down its Revere, Massachusetts plant. Well, that's oxymoron. Uh, And lay off the majority of its employers seem to strike a nostalgic chord with consumers, leading to a surge in wafer sales. No. no, What, seven? Is that how many they bought? (laughs) Seven. Seven. Candy stores and consumers are trying to get their hands on whichever Nico Nico. (laughs) products they can get. The journal reported include Mary Jane's squirrel nut zippers. What the fuck is a squirrel nut zipper? Squirrel nut zippers are good, and they're a band. Uh, don't don't they, don't people use Necco wafers for pogs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people still play pogs. <laughs> Alf's back and in pog form. I don't know. When I was finishing the drywall, I did put some of the Necco wafers in there, so it worked really well. Yeah, Clark the holes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Clark Bars and Sweethearts, the popular heart-shaped Valentine's Day candy. No, those are awful, too. They're better than Necco wafers. That's not saying much. Mine. Clark Bars are all right. Clark Bars are good. I liked yeah. those. Yay. <laughs> One out of seven, and good for them. Uh, whatever they're chas- what they're chasing after most of are the wafers. Uh, let's see here. They're known for their unusually long shelf life. And a recipe that's been unchanged since the days when the indestructible candies fueled Union soldiers during the Civil War. <laughs> And some of them are still made back then. Yeah. It's still, still <laughs> yeah. edible today. <laughs> Expires 2087. Yeah. No, I, I don't understand how they can call Necco wafers candy. I mean, there's just nothing or about edible. that. Well, they're just calcium deposits. A lot of things are editable. Editable? Edible. 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 Yeah, and I corrected you. It's not so fun, is it? Hey, so what do you bring? Oh, that was you correcting hey, me? Hey, what did you bring the Greeks into this? I'm sorry. What they have ever done for us. <laughs> Besides the aqueducts. <laughs> that was the Romans. <laughs> did they wear togas? Yes. <laughs> toga, so they're so there. Toga. Toga. <laughs> We've gone off the rails. Anyways, moving on. Uh, John Prince. He's not really a real one. The president... That's interesting. He's a prince, but as a president of wholesalercandyfavorites.com <laughs> in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, told the journal he received hundreds of frantic calls over a recent weekend, some from buyers who wanted to purchase his entire inventory of Necco wafers. They're shocked and scared, he told the journal. They're not happy about it. Oh, no. <laughs> They're not happy about it. What are they going to do? 
Do you think the Union soldiers used uh, the Necco wafers as shields, like, back in the day? You oh, I was thinking lot? they used them as projectiles and took down a bunch of Confederates with like them. Like trebuchets? <laughs> we got a rock and a Necco wafer. What are we going to use? Put the Necco wafer in. Oh, my God, I took out 20. <laughs> it was the first known uh, use of uh, bulletproof vests because they would pour them in their front pockets <laughs> for protection. <laughs> and then they would eat them later. Yes. And then eat them later, yes. Uh, so are you going to be upset, Jim, or Jeff, uh, about the Necco wafers? Nope. Okay. Blake, you going to get some more? No. Okay. Uh, the, and- only, the only thing about it is people in the future will not understand how terrible they are and won't believe us when we actually say that something like that was actually made to be mm-hmm. an edible product. Kind of like lead paint back in the day with our parents. We weren't supposed about. to eat that, though. Oh. Yeah. These Necco wafers are meant to be eaten. You know, they, are they really, though? If they want to know what a real panic will be is when, they, is when the, the Pez company says they're going out of business. Yes, then there will be a run on mm, uh, The world shall burn. Oh, and then we would have to stock up on European Pez. Uh, per Fox News, finally, per Fox News, George R. R. Martin, I'm a hobbit, is famous for writing the Game of Thrones books. But he's also infamous for the fact that he's yet to finish writing the books <laughs> after more than two decades. The reason, basically, he's just as obsessed with writing the books as his fan base is with reading them. He's st- uh, Martin has started writing novels and has never fully been, but has never been the 69-year-old uh, writer's dream. <laughs> 69. Shut up, Gronk. And is why he's stalled when it comes to finishing his books. Uh, basically, his loyal fan base has turned against him. Uh, at the age of 21, Martin... No, we haven't. He's, uh, Martin started selling science fiction short stories and found great success critically, but struggled to pay the bills. In 1987, he dipped his toe into Hollywood when one of his novellas, Night Flyers, was made into a movie. I said novellas, right? You did. Yay! I thought you'd say novellas. <laughs> While it wasn't a big hit at the theater, it made him enough money to continue writing professionally. Story hoards relevance because Sci-Fi uh, recently picked it up for an upcoming TV series. Uh, after several fire pilots, he turned back to the world of novels, and in 1996, he published a 700-page volume of a projected three-book series titled A Game of Thrones. <laughs> the volume now is then became seven books uh, that will make up the song of a Song of Ice and Fire series, a number that plagues the famed author to this day. Seven has been a really ongoing theme today. I noticed that. Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked about this on our special Game of Thrones podcasts. Yes. And uh, basically, uh, after he wrote a couple books, blah, 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 A Dance with Dragons will eventually come out six years later in 2011. The second largest gap between two books in the series. Uh, ba- uh, it was the first sign of the story ballooning beyond a place that Martin can control. He states, I have to ask myself, how long is it going to take this character to get from point A to point B by ship? Meanwhile, what? Something the television producers never bothered to think about. (laughs) Or care about. It happened pretty much instantaneously. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, what's happened in the other books? If it's going to take him this long, but in the other book I said he's already arrived, then, well, I'm in trouble. So I have. Who wraps her mind around that and who cares? So I have to. The author and his people who. He's got some. Obsessed people who are obsessed with the work that he has as fact finders. So I have to have him leave earlier. That kind of stuff has driven me crazy. He wrote it on his blog in 2010. Yeah, no shit. Stop writing your blog and write the book. Oh yeah, you know he was the last person using his blog site. By the way, that site oh. closed. He was the only person still <laughs> using that blog provider. I just read about it this week. I That's read an article. Well, after it became after HBO. <laughs> After HBO uh, funded Game of Thrones, the TV series, uh, people were still clamoring for the books. Uh, he cannot write a blog post, appear in public, or even watch a football game without people angrily demanding that he's pro style. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny, really, to tell you the truth. But they it's yell also at him to get sad. Be, they get, yell at him to get behind the keyboard and finish the books. Exactly. It, it's almost kind of sad. The fact that the guy doesn't have the same amount of passion as his fans do. Fans do. It was like he doesn't really bother or focus on finishing the book. He's like, ah, I'll get around to it when I do, now that I'm fat and rich. He's 69 years old. He's going to die before he finishes the books. And nobody procreated with him, right? 
God, I hope not. Well, he's married. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, he's married. He has a wife. Oh, God for her. I mean, I don't know if they have any children, but... And <laughs> I think he still wears the same hat. Despite all the money he made, <laughs> he still wears the same damn cool hat. Though. I feel like he smells. Anyways, in 2018, <laughs> fans are still waiting for his sixth book, The Winds of Winter. In July, still waiting. In July of 2017, he announced on his blog that he would produce two books based on the world of Westeros. But not the wing of winter. In the coming months. He announced Fire and Blood, a projected two-volume anthology that would cover how the world was shaped <laughs> in the decade. I'm going two-volume anthology. <laughs> you know what? Before screw, that. <laughs> screw finishing Lord of the Rings. I'm going to write this summarily. I didn't, I didn't get around to it. He finally writes, and yes, I know you all want to know about the winds of winter, too. I'm still <laughs> working on it. I'm still months away. I still have good days and bad days. <laughs> It's going to say. ruin it for you, so I don't give a shit anymore. They already ruined it. Yeah. Whether so. Winds or the first volume of Fire and Blood will be the first to hit the bookstores, it's hard to say at this juncture. But I do think you will have a Westeros book from me in 2018. And who knows, maybe two. A Boy Can Dream. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you and your blog. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh my God. Was it Blogspot? Yeah, yeah, it was like Blogspot or You're something. You're like Blogspot? He was the That's last was, yeah. user on that website. Yes. And he, so he finally stopped. Well, obviously not, 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 not <laughs> on the Winter. winter. <laughs> you find him on the history He finally, just, he he finally just moved to MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, apparently there's a lot of megabytes available there. <laughs> Ted likes him or whoever is that guy. What's the guy's name? Who's your buddy on t- on MySpace? Bob. You always got that one follower. I don't remember. The guy who started MySpace. We're going to Bob. Bob likes him. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, George. <laughs> on a better note, Westworld starts this weekend. You ready, Blake? I'm ready. I'm yeah. so excited. Uh, Samurai World. Shogun I know. World. Well, Legion number three is on tonight, man. You better get caught up because the first I will, two are pretty Westworld. cool. Westworld, Jeff, are you excited? Yeah. I'm more excited to catch up on Legion. No, yes. Westworld. I'm ready. They're going to Shogun World. I'm excited. There's going to be some fun stuff. Michonne's going to show up. Yeah, there'd probably be like a five-second scene no, they said they're, they're actually, Shogun World. They said they're going to devote some time be to like, it. Fuck Westworld next week. <laughs> next week. Like, next time, next week, five seconds. What you're down next week? No, this week. Westworld. <laughs> fucking Shogun World. It's only there for five seconds. Fuck it. Anyways, let's get some uh, promos from our friends. Do you like movie reviews? How about true crime stories, celebrity interviews? Well, you won't get any of that here. I'm a stay-at-home dad with four boys and a night job. I don't have time for all that crap. What I do have time for is browsing the web for weird and idiotic news stories. Then I bring my favorites to you every week along with my own weird life lessons and favorite podcast recommendations because, hey, sharing is caring, right? So subscribe to Odd Dad Out in Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, or your favorite podcatcher. And follow me on Twitter at Odd Dad Out and add a little weird to your day. Jeff, what are you doing September 14th through 16th? I'm going to be at the Cincinnati Comic Expo. You know what? Hobie will be there. Yes, we will. Cincinnati, Ohio, Duke Energy Convention Center. Podcasters, geek fans, everybody, come uh, visit us. And say hi. Blake will be in the Hobie Green Room, aka the drinking area, yeah. uh, that day. He may show up for five minutes on a podcast. We don't know. Scab Jeff will be there with his llama. But more importantly, let's talk about the guests at the Cincinnati Comic Expo. We have Carl Urban. Judge Dredd himself is going to be there. Oh, you mean uh, Aomir? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jamie Lannister is going yeah. to be there because winter is coming. Yes. Uh, that is a rare appearance for him. Uh, also, Summer Glau. She's bringing some serenity to uh, uh, to the show. Summer Glau. Everyone should be showing up, lining up, buying tickets now. Uh, Colby Smolders is going to be there from How I Met Your Mother and Avengers. So that's a good fun one. I always liked her. Oh, and then yes. you can say, what do you really think about this se- series finale of How I Met Your Mother? <laughs> I would advise you not to do that. <laughs> I'm sure that probably the handle is just don't ask her about the series finale. <laughs> <laughs> no one liked it. Uh, anyways, also... Uh, Sherard Jackson was just announced today. He's an art- artist, writer, and creator. Uh, he made Galaxies for Hire, an independent book. Take a look at it. He was there last year, too, and I actually am going to buy that book this year. 
because I looked at it last year and I waited to the last minute. Actually, we were doing podcasts. I didn't get a chance to buy it. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, we we were kind of busy. So when when yes. we do have some uh, time to go walk around, it, it's not a whole lot. Yes, but since I Comic Expo September fourteenth through the sixteenth, and you can find them on the his on uh, Facebook at the Sensei Comic Expo. Go to our page, The History of Bad Ideas, and we will also be updating uh, the guest. And I have, from Sensei Comic Expo, a big announcement tomorrow, Wednesday, April 18th. So so by the time you hear this, there, there might be, be a, a chance new- that it will be up on uh, on our Facebook page. Or- yep, on Sensei Comic Expo's Facebook page. There's a big guest being announced tomorrow, uh, so check them out. And get your tickets at SenseiComicExpo.com. Com. It's time for Box Office Bombs. All right. Uh, this week, not really bombs to report, although I think Rampage wanted to make more than they really did. Go ahead and tell us how many it is, and I'll let you know. Rampage is number one in the U.S. box office this week at $34.5 million in its opening weekend. On a one hundred and twenty million dollar budget, probably double that on the on marketing, because anywhere you go, you see Rampage. Rampage is being marketed up the wazoo. Uh, the rumor uh, they they, they, they sponsored. Won- sorry, they sponsored a three hundred thousand uh, dollar giveaway on HQ Trivia. Really, the app you can play on mm-hmm. your your smarty phones. They uh, they uh, won it fifty million. They won it forty five to fifty million. Uh, they did not get it, but. Uh, I did. We did get a review. Uh, they said it was from a listener. Uh, I, it is from Gabe, and uh, the listener said the first half was okay, a little slow, and then the whole last half was just a fun popcorn movie. So they said if you you know the first half was not bad, but they said don't go into expecting Academy Awards. It was a fun time. I don't think anybody is going into expecting yeah. it. And they said it was a fun time to watch. Uh, you know, just to go in, it's a popcorn flick. It's a good, fun monster attack one. They said, um, but yeah, the first half was a little bit slow, and then it really picked up once they started releasing the monsters. So, and Ralphie and Liz are, Lizzie are in it. So there you go. All right, second this week, a quiet place Shh. made three hundred. Oh wait, no, thirty-three million dollars, a total of ninety-nine and a half million, on a budget of seventeen million. So A Quiet Place in its second week almost beat out the big release of Rampage. Yes, that I I thought Rampage would hit about fifty million. I was kind of surprised it did not. Uh, good for Quiet Place though. Yes, good for Quiet Place. Go John Krasinski. Yes. Uh, Truth or Dare, which we had just been told to not pay money to watch, made nineteen million in its opening weekend on a three point five million dollar budget. Okay. I suppose that you know, nineteen million uh, with a three and a half million dollar budget, making money. That's what horror movies are great for the box office. Yes. Uh, fourth this week, Ready Player One made another eleven million, total of one hundred and fifteen million on a hundred and seventy five million dollar budget. Worldwide is going to make its money back. I heard it was killing it worldwide. Yeah. So I think you'll be fine. Well, 1980s nostalgia is pretty big everywhere around the world. So. Yeah, but I, mean, I was just kind of like. I, I, well, I think it's not even... I think that's what the movie did, was get too far away from the 80s nostalgia, and apparently over in uh, uh, Asia, mm-hmm. it's huge over there, because a lot of the the stuff yeah. that they're referring to are big, uh, big touchstones in their past. Mm-hmm. So Asia, apparently loving Ready Player One. Uh, and... At number five, Blockers made another ten million, a total of thirty-seven million on a twenty-one million dollar budget. The documentary about blue blockers, the sunglasses. I wish that sounds more yeah, interesting. Blue blockers. Than, it's a NFL films documentary about uh, guys on the offensive line. I wish. No, it's about a wrestler trying to stop his daughter from having sex. He doesn't play a wrestler in it. Calm down. It's a wrestler. Playing a guy who's trying Leave to stop Billy Jim alone, okay? He's a <laughs> wonderful actor. Yeah, and they put him in the WWE Hall of Fame. Don't get me started on that. I shit. think that just disqualifies no, the Coco WWE. No, Coco Beware Hall disqualified the. Coco Beware was much cooler than Hillbilly Jim. Yeah, I don't know about that. He had Frankie. That's true. That is true. <laughs> uh, just to let you know, Avengers Infinity War opens in two weeks. 
They're does. projecting it between two hundred thirty-five million and two hundred fifty-five million dollars opening weekend. Yeah, it's already sold more pre-sale tickets mm-hmm. than, from what I understand, all of the Marvel movies combined. Yeah, and previously Black Panther had that record. Yes, but uh, Infinity War has now broke the Black Panther record. Uh, they said that uh, if it hits 255, it will break Star Wars Cold in the Force Awakens opening weekend record wow. at 247. So I think it's going to go up even more. I could not, I would not be surprised if it hits 260, 270. That wouldn't surprise I, you me. You know what? Okay, so I'm really, I'm like excited to see it, I guess. But like, I'm not like buying into the huge hype of it. I guess I'm maybe marveled out or superheroed out. Like, I really want to see it. Don't get me wrong. But I'm like, yeah, okay. Black Panther I was more excited about because it was different. I'd rather see superhero movies about one superhero than 50 of them in one together. Okay. I, I mean, I think it's cool that, you know, or Star maybe Wars one or will two. meet with Robert Downey Jr., you know. No, well, per- personally, I love the team ups. I love team, mm-hmm. the team concept in superheroes. Isn't it kind of like mixing but, Star Wars and Star Trek? Stop no. It. Stop but it. everybody in there. Oh, spoiler for what's coming up next. Oh, no. no. <laughs> But uh, throwing everybody in there might be a little too much. Like, no one's going to get enough screen time to justify any of their salaries. Hey, there's, there's Hawkeye. There he is. <laughs> he's back there. Oh, I think you just got apparently, killed. Apparently, he's the one guy that's not in any of the trailers. That, so people uh, are like... People are putting his face on milk cartons. Have you seen me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I saw something where they had uh, the picture of the uh, soundtrack. And yeah. they showed the back I of the see. CD. And it's like, uh, uh, track one. Captain America's death. Track two, Iron Man's death. Track three, the Scarlet Witch's death. Track four, Hawkeye survives. <laughs> Track five, like everybody else. A bunch dies. of soldiers yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah. Track yeah. seven, Falcon dies. <laughs> okay, what, what we got coming up? Let's hurry this up. What's coming up? Uh, April twentieth, two thousand eighteen. Rocket. The intern got it correct this year, this week. Uh, it is. I feel pretty with uh, Amy Schumer. She gets knocked on her head and starts realizing that she's pretty. It doesn't matter what size she is. Okay. I thought is she going to sing the song from West Side Story? I feel pretty. I feel pretty. I don't know what that was. I feel pretty. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I just sang. And he's going. Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, super. It's, it's like shallow Hal without shallow Hal. Ah. Oh, okay. anything without Jack Black, that's I'm right. fine with. Super Troopers Two. I'm intrigued. Yay. I am. I'm, I might. Hit the uh, theater this weekend. Okay. I might. Just might. If you have nothing else to do. I saw Super Troopers 1 in the theater like twice. I saw it with you opening day. I don't think it was opening day. Oh, that week. (laughs) Nobody else was there. Oh, yeah. We we were the only people in the the theater. theater. Uh, We made out. It was nice. No, we really didn't. Because the theater I worked at didn't get it, but another one in our chain did. I kept asking if you wanted popcorn, and you said, no, I don't want to reach in there and get the popcorn. Uh, Exactly. And apparently, traffic is coming out again. Yeah, uh, this is with a K though, not oh, C. Oh, traffic. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, was, was this a reunion tour? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the band. Okay. And finally, uh, we got buy sell, Jeff. What do we got for buy sell? The stock of? Uh, we are going with The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. He is on the Hollywood Stock Exchange. One hundred seventy-nine dollars and sixty-one cents. Comparison to Chris Pratt at $190.43. I'll buy. Oh, I mean, I know that's like ridiculously high compared to some of these other yeah. ones we have, but The Rock mm. is the, probably the big, the, the biggest. Him and Chris rock. Pratt are the goal, are the sure bets. Yeah, I, I think I'm surprised The Rock is under Chris Pratt. They're like a prom queen, the mm. sure bet. <laughs> Blake, are you buying or selling? Selling. I'm selling. You think he's I'm peak? selling right now. Sell high. Buy low after he's uh, first term as president of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> Worked for Reagan. Uh, Jeff, tell us about Truth or Dare. That came out this week, too. We always do the, the actors or actresses yeah. that come out in the movie. No one from the cast of Truth or Dare is on the Hollywood Stock Exchange. No one. Have we heard of anyone from the cast of Truth or Dare? Uh, Margaret uh, Sullivan. Uh, sure. Kevin Kevin at Cincy Explorer did not provide any actors or actresses uh, in his review. I think the other guy is named uh, Ted Hogelston. I, I, I have no problem with them using people who have left a mark on Hollywood yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I just like that HSX. Nope, we have nobody. 
<laughs> please, please stop looking for truth or dare. <laughs> we do not want to affiliate this. Uh, let's do some top five, Jeff. All right. I love that music. I know you do. Jeff, what's our top five this week? Our top five, as we discussed last week, (laughs) uh, is uh, our top five characters that we want to place into another uh, show or uh, franchise. Like as we discussed last week, uh, Scooby-Doo going into an episode of uh, Supernatural. So, Rocket, the intern, screwed this up originally. Uh, I think Rocket got fired. I over Rocket is fired. I, I screwed my top five up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Everybody kind of screwed it up. Do so. whatever you want to do. All right. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Go ahead, Jeff. What's your number one five? Well, what was it supposed to be? This is what it was That's supposed, what supposed to be. That's what it was supposed to be. The, intern, the intern sent something out about rebooting shows with new characters. With new actors and actresses. Yeah. I uh, see. I took it as recasting actors in TV shows. Well, you could do that, too. <laughs> and that's what I did. That's, what, that's fine. We'll go with yours. All right. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Next week, you can do your list of this. And, and we'll, we'll do our list of yours. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I already got my list of recasts for next week. <laughs> <laughs> so well, next week, Blake, do this week. Remember, we are professional amateurs. <laughs> that's right. I'll just preface it this by saying... At lunch at work today, I, we were discussing it and coming up with ideas, and then my coworker said, uh, it's tweeted out that that's not what you're... <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw that you tweeted, uh, Hobie, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Rocket, get in here! <laughs> you boost. Uh, go to Kevin Spacey. You're done. You're his new intern. Oh, you're sending him to Kevin Spacey. It's okay. Ooh. Rocket's 87, oh. so it's fine. <laughs> oh, we had a great intern there. Hi, is there a seven in there? <laughs> Replace my boy blue. Uh, what's your number five? My number five. I suppose I shouldn't have to worry about anyone stealing them <laughs> since no one would probably dance the same. But I think I want to take the character of Paul Blart, mm-hmm. Mall Cop. Oh, thank you. And put him in Dawn of the Dead. Oh, he would be eaten quick. Probably. I would just want to see. He's the Mall Cop. Yep. Dawn of the Dead is the zombies in the mall. Kind of want to see those together. I hope he my number five. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Barry Stinson from How I Met Your Mother. Barney? Yep. Barney, sorry, not Barry. <laughs> Barney. Barry. <laughs> I like Barry Stinson, too. He's a hell of a singer. Uh, Barney Stinson as host of Love Connection. Uh, I think he would take a good role instead of Chuck Watery. He would have Barney. I tied that with another reality show, game show, Iron Chef, and I want Dexter Morgan on it from Dem- the TV show Dexter. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Dexter Morgan is an Iron Chef? This week's special ingredient, body parts. <laughs> Human being. <laughs> so but he wasn't a cannibal, though. Well, no, but he could help. Sure, sure. Uh, Blake, what's your number five for recast? Uh, you know, the show Bewitched. Yes. I'd totally recast Dick York. As, with who? Some other dick. <laughs> dick Sargent, maybe? I think he'd be a good choice. There right. you go. Uh, what's your number four? <laughs> My number four, uh, Cheers. I never liked Coach. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, who would you recast I'd replace him with? him with, like, Woody Harrelson or somebody. <laughs> I could see that working. Yeah. Now, yeah. Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, my no- <laughs> number four, this is an oldie, so kids, look it up. Frozen Caveman Lawyer in oh, Mad Men. I want him to be an ad executive okay. and an attorney. Yeah. I think you're going to stick him into a. I a, thought about a legal some show, one. but ah, Mad think, Men. I can see it. I'm Mad getting Man. there. I'm getting okay. some. Ah, I want Pepsi. <laughs> All right, this one I'm throwing out there. It's a little out there. Uh-huh. I want to because see, these all seem grounded. Yeah, okay. I want to see Andy Dwyer. Don't you do it? Don't in you do it? Brewster's Million. I want to see how Andy Dwyer would spend $30 million in 30 days and have nothing to show for it at the end. He would do it in a day. I think it would be a better movie than Richard Pryor doing it. Well, that's not saying one. Uh, Andy Dwyer is my number one, but it's in something else. Oh. I don't let you wait. Okay. Uh, what's your number three? My number three is I'm taking Jay and Silent Bob uh-huh. 
and putting them in Breaking Bad. <laughs> Breaking Bad's my number three, you know, <laughs> with Eric Cartman. Because <laughs> I feel like Eric Cartman is such an asshole that he would be worse than uh, the main character uh, in it. So I'm, I'm putting Jane and Silent Bob as just drug dealers for... They would uh, be... They're the guys on the street selling, you they know. They would get killed within two days because they would smoke and uh, use everything. Smoochy boots. Uh, they just smoked the pot. I don't That's think true. they were doing the crack. They would sell the crack, though. Well, I got Eric Cartman in Breaking Bad. That's pretty funny at number three. <laughs> yeah. Of all the shows, <laughs> you got Andy Dwyer with me, and yeah. we got Breaking Bad. Okay, what's your number three, Blake? You know that uh, Dario Naharis guy in Game of Thrones? No. Yeah, I'd replace him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I didn't like that edge grind guy. I know he tomatoes he, and onions. He, <laughs> he probably should just stick to playing in Deadpool movies. Yeah, like what's your number two? <laughs> My number two. You know, when I look at Happy Days, I was never satisfied with Pat Morita as Arnold, so I'd replace him with like some Italian guy. <laughs> hey, welcome. That's like uh, Al Molinaro. Uh, My number two. <laughs> This is a fun one. I do like this topic. Uh, my, we should do a top ten. Uh, number, number two, Cameron Tucker from Modern Family. Okay. He's the coach of Friday Night Lights. <laughs> <laughs> He's a football coach in it. I, I can see that. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get it together. <laughs> oh, uh, My number two, I'm taking uh, Bill and Ted. And I want to see them in Doctor Who. Oh, because of time travel? The time travel. You know, the, the TARDIS runs oh, into the uh, telephone booth. That's a good one. Causes yeah. problems in the time. You, you can put them booth. in the X-Men film universe, too. That's that time was, travel. That was your Probably number cool. one? That was my number two. Oh, that was your number two. That's pro- that a good one. It was my number one until I thought of my number one, and I liked that one so well, much. What's your number oh, one? Shit. My number one is I'm taking Hot Pie Hot from... Pie. Uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Uh, uh, okay. And I'm putting him in Top Chef. <laughs> I would laugh because I don't know what you're talking about, but you know what, Jeff? I'll give you an honorary one. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, my number one is Andy Dwyer from Parks and Rec, Chris Pratt's mm-hmm. character, who's dumb, but what was his alter ego? Burt Macklin. The FBI, FBI agent. FBI. And you know what he's in? Blake, you ready? What? Yeah! Dun-dun! CSI Miami. <laughs> it's awesome. I want Andy Dwyer in CSI Miami just so he can take the glasses off, and I think he could pull it off as that character. Fuck David Koresh or whatever his name David is. David Koresh. <laughs> yes, fuck David Koresh. <laughs> Andy Dwyer. Yeah! It's awesome. I still like the Cameron Tucker one. I was pretty proud of that one. So, What's your number one? Well, actually, I was very scared there for a moment. I thought uh, Jeff had actually stole my number one <laughs> with Doctor Who. Two different top no. fives. <laughs> he did almost steal my Doctor Who one. First, yeah. I, I would probably replace that William Hartnell guy mm-hmm. with uh, Patrick Troughton, and then I would replace him with John Pertwee. But I don't like him either, so I probably would go a little bit with Tom Baker for a while. Until you got for, for a while, like then I would though. get to Peter Davison. Mm-hmm. But I would mix Peter Davison in there intermittently in between everybody else, like Richard Humdahl or Colin Baker or Sylvester McCoy. McCoy. Paul McGann. McGann. Christopher Eccleston. David Tennant. Matt Smith. You can't get rid of David Tennant. John Hurt. Yeah, I'd replace him with Peter Tinklage. Uh, Polly. Tink- Tinklage. Yeah. I'd get rid of Peter uh, Capaldi and replace him with uh, some probably woman. With woman. Yeah, I probably would do that, too. Yeah. You know, it is, after all, the 2000s, 2100s. That season start? I think Christmas. Okay. Or did they do it this last Christmas? I don't know. I don't know. They almost usually do it at the Christmas show is when they usually do their... Uh, yeah, you know, I'd replace, or play, replace Capaldi with uh, Scully. All right. Yeah. Uh, I there had some go. honorable mentions. So did I. So did I. <laughs> What's your honorable mention, Blake? Uh, you know that uh, original Bigfoot guy for Six Million Dollar Man? Yes. Uh, I'd replace that guy with, like, some unknown, like, Ted Cassidy. Ted Krasinski? No, Ted oh. Cassidy. And who else? But you said some unknown. Ted Cassidy. Wasn't that Lurch? No. 
You the original, uh, the original you Bigfoot know. and six million dollar six million dollar man. Yeah, was Andre the Giant? Oh, was it? I you did not. Right. I'd rather have Lurch than Andre yes. the Giant. I agree with you, Thank Peter you. Andre. <laughs> I still don't know who that is. We'll talk. Uh, <laughs> I would replace that uh, white and pink Power Ranger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The what white? else? <laughs> Hurry this up. I wouldn't replace the Power Ranger it. with anybody. <laughs> Shut up and let him go. <laughs> what else? You got, you got any more? You got, you know that you Gregor Clan Clegane from Game of Thrones? Yes. Yeah, I replace him too. Okay, moving on. Uh, honorable <laughs> mention. Uh, for me, I have Eleven from um, uh, Stranger Things. Str- yes, I would put her on Charmed. Ooh, uh, I was, I was Milano thinking, in her place. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking uh, when you mentioned Eleven, yeah. I thought you were going to say uh, the Craft. Oh, that would work. <laughs> I loved her in the Craft. Uh, I would have Kramer from Seinfeld. Dead. He's a racist asshole, so I'm going to put him in Prison Break. I feel like he would do well in that show. Oz, put him in Oz. Oz was another one I thought about. <laughs> and finally, Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be all naked and afraid. Oh, God. <laughs> he wouldn't be afraid, though. No, no, he wouldn't. <laughs> I would put him in as James Bond. He's the new Bond. Ron Swanson? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought about Survivor, but then I thought he would just kill everyone. Uh, what, Jeff, what's your honorable mentions? Uh, my honorable mentions, uh, I've got a three-pack here from the uh, world of Star Wars. Okay. Thought, you got to combine Star Wars and Star Trek. No, you don't. And I thought, who would I want to see in the other universe? And I thought yeah, it would you know, be interesting. I, I would switch out that Greg Lucas guy. Greg Lucas? George Lucas? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, For that Jay Abrams? <laughs> Junior Abrams Ryan guy? Ryan Johnson. Ryan. I would like to see Han and Chewie. In the Star Trek universe. Okay. Just see how they would, you know, deal with and interact with people eh, going on okay. in Star Trek. Uh, we discussed this uh, like work to today. I Battlestar Galactica. I would much rather see them in that. I agree. Uh, or Dune. Princess Leia Organa in Game of Thrones. Ooh. Ooh that they have her good. take on Cersei. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big Game of Thrones fan, but I think that would be kind of fun. Okay. And we also discussed uh, Jar Jar Binks mm-hmm. uh, as somebody in the Mission Impossible gang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to be really quiet in here. Why we got to be quiet? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that would be the shortest Mission Impossible installment. I like it already. <laughs> Still six hours. Uh, so there you go. There's your uh, history of bad ideas. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, bad idea number 289 uh, telling people that you're going to write a seven-volume book series when you don't like to write. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Addendum. You got some names, of titles. Jeff, I, do you have any? No, I don't have very many. I will be honest. I have nothing on that page. Nothing behind my mm. ears. Mm. Nothing in my hands. Um, I like Barry Stinson. Okay. And Stem Bank. Well, that's all I have written down. <laughs> <laughs> I got Where Is the Stem Bank. Okay. I like that one. <laughs> Stem Bank. <laughs> uh, I got Boo Boo Bear, Guidance Counselor. I got Scrappy Doo, Paladin. Uh, six episodes with Cousin Oliver. Uh, Nick Cage, Stop Having Thoughts. <laughs> uh, bean the Underprivileged, because we're beaning them. Oh, beaning. Bean, yeah. Oh, I thought you said being. <laughs> being the Underprivileged works too. I don't know how that works. Uh, what's a squirrel nut zipper? So, uh, I do like the stem bank. Uh, I do like Nick Cage. Stop having thoughts. I like Scrappy Doo Paladin. Anything that insults Nick Cage, I can go for. Can you get away with having Nick Cage in the title? Nick Cage, stop having thoughts. I like it. That would be my vote. But I can understand if you didn't want to go that way. I do like where is the stem bank? Did like where is the stem bank? And I did like Scrappy Doo Paladin. I like Scrappy Doo Paladin. Scrappy Doo Paladin. Uh, okay, Scrappy Doo Paladin. It is all right. Look at that. Stem bank. So close. Go back to Europe. <laughs> was Scrappy Doo. Scrappy Doo wasn't 
uh, Scooby Doo was not Hanna Barbera, was it? Yes. yes, they were. Yeah, yes. but they're not in existence anymore. No. They're not. I don't know. Scooby Doo Paladin. <laughs> that's that's going to be our plea. <laughs> Scooby Doo. No Paladin. Le- LeBron James has filed a copyright lawsuit against Nick Saban in the University of Alabama because LeBron James has started a. Uh, like a short internet show yeah. with a guy sitting in barber chairs getting haircuts and talking about sports. And University of Alabama has been doing the same thing, but LeBron Chang claims he's first and he has the copyright to the idea. Oh, um, okay. Unbeknownst to him, this is an idea that's been in, like, in use and existence for the past 50, 60 years. Yeah, I'm about and to say. skit world and yeah. movies and stuff. Yeah, and did, then, didn't they do that in the Andy Griffith show? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. And, you know, in Barbershop, Barbershop 2, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it's like, you don't have original content here. I like how the, the addendum has now become, yeah. hey, here's the inside jokes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here, here's what you didn't understand I was referring to. Oh, we're still to. recording? Oh, yeah, we're recording. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't stop so yet. now, So now... <laughs> we're trying to be under two so hours. So now with LeBron uh, filing, uh, sending a cease and desist letter, letter to Saban and the University of Alabama, now the people that actually said they pitched the idea to LeBron are now suing him, saying, actually, you know what? You're right. That was actually our idea yeah. for you to go do. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's hilarious. Ah. Addendum. Yeah. You've been listening to Hobie.
Nuestro Nancha Hobby.